Hey guys, I'm Nomi Konst uh, with the Young Turks and TYT Politics, and we had some breaking news today from President Trump. He signed an executive order uh, to continue all pipelines in the country, including the Dakota Access Pipeline and the Keystone XL Pipeline. And of course, activists from around the country, around the world, uh, immediately voice their opposition and anger, and now protests are erupting. We are very lucky to have an old friend of ours, Chase Iron Eyes, who has been active in protesting the Dakota Access Pipeline in North Dakota. He is live from North Dakota right now. Thanks for joining us, Chase. Thank you. Thank you for having me. How is the scene in North Dakota right now? What is the community feeling? Well, everybody, everybody is kind of in a state of, of shock, but, but also... We all realized that Trump, uh, while he was running for president, made every indication that he was going to be friendly to uh, those, the corporations, the donors, the people who have a vested interest in these pipeline projects. And so I don't think we were too surprised, but now it's, it's go time and, and people are mobilizing on the ground to meet uh, this, what appears to be, you know, in, a, in approval of the project or, or an oncoming approval, to meet it with an unarmed and nonviolent resistance. What is it like on the ground? How many people are at camp right now? After after President Obama said that he would halt any uh, any construction. Well, during that time, about December fourth, there, there was probably. 13,000 people on the ground, and, and right now there's probably about maybe 1,000, uh, maybe 500 north of the Cannonball River, where, uh, you know, that's that's contested treaty territory that we have not been, as Native nations, we haven't been there for over 120 years, and so a lot of us are there to make a statement that, you know, if you, if you it would take too long of, of, of an interview, um, to describe the the real ways that Native nations are being oppressed in 2016, uh, politically, economically, and legally. But, um, you know, I'm an attorney, and so I studied these things. And, for instance, we don't have title to our own land, even. The United States holds superior, t superior title and, and acts as our trustee and indeed holds us in this state of tutelage or, or bondage or, you know, it, it resembles the relationship of, of a guardian to a, a ward. We couldn't create our own free or fair trade zones. We don't regulate or have jurisdiction over all the tax activity on the reservation. There's, there's many things that are part and parcel to the reasons why people are making a treaty stand, but the, but the top two priorities are this um, militarized economic sanction, this, this bridge blockade that's been in place since October 27th and which is costing this native nation, the Standing Rock Nation, my nation, a tremendous amount of hardship. And it's well played by the governor and by the people who instituted these roadblocks in the beginning um, because it's turned the tribal government against the water protectors. But that bridge, opening that bridge is, is a primary concern, as is stopping the pipeline. And this, if you, you've been out here, and so, and indeed, uh, the Young Turks viewing audience, which is very active and, and very involved, knows that there are, there have been about 600 arrests out here on the ground, that people have been Permanently maimed, uh, Sophia Wolanski had her arm blown uh, grotesquely open. Um, another lady named uh, uh, Sue, Susie, uh, lost her eyesight. Uh, one of our good buddies just like four days ago had about a one-inch hole put in his leg from a less lethal bullet because uh, police are, are, are responding and private, you know, the corporate security, mercs, uh, you, Ex-mercenaries, these these uh, Tiger Swan, these are companies who operate in in very volatile theaters, and that's what most people don't realize that there is an oil war going on in the heartland of America right now. It's
it's low level, but it's going down. Have they, after December 4th, did they leave? Did, did, did the authorities, did the police, did the, uh, the mercenaries, did they leave the land? No, not at all. Um, I, in hindsight, it appears that December 4th was almost an, an orchestrated de-escalation, a, a step down for people to declare a victory. And personally, what I think it was is that 10,000 or no, 4,000 United States veterans had showed up. And to be honest, the North Dakota law enforcement, Morton County and North Dakota National Guard, we, we with, with a, as divisive a president as Donald Trump is proving to be, or at least at that time that he indicated that he would be, uh, we just, I don't think our country could have afforded the visuals of armed, uniformed U.S. soldiers facing off with other unarmed, uniformed U.S. soldiers. It, it calls into question too many things of who, who is in the, who's upholding law and order or the Constitution at that point? Who's a traitor? Who's a patriot? Who's a terrorist? Is it the people that are uh, risking their, their life and, and liberty to protect water and natural resources on behalf of our country's posterity? Or is it the private corporations with mercenaries who are extracting these resources to the detriment of America's health, selling them to foreign countries for their own private benefit? Who's the traitor? Who's the terrorist there? That's, that's what's going to be called into question out here on the ground in the coming days. Are, is the community at Standing Rock going to call for people to return to Standing Rock, or are there going to be other types of actions uh, to push back? Because you're, you're no longer trying to influence President Obama. You're, you're trying to influence somebody who, uh, you know, had, had half of the country show up as, at a protest on his first day in office uh, and, and didn't seem to care. <laughs> so how, how do you push back? Is the strategy going to change at all? The, no, the strategy, um, well, Standing Rock has, for all intents and purposes, the tribal government itself has withdrawn itself from the physical, on-the-ground fight. They are, they are most interested in just opening the roadblock up so that money can start flowing back into the casino. And this is a lot like what happened 125 years ago when the United States created a state of dependence with Native nations. And then when we wouldn't sign more documents to cede more land, by that time they had instituted a, a process known as ration uh, distribution where they were, they were supplying the, the food that we were depending on to live. And so they would just withhold those rations until we complied with whatever demand it was that they had at the time. And that's what's going on right now. They put a roadblock up, and until we comply, they're not, they're, they have no interest in opening that roadblock. It's an economic sanction. And so the tribe and the grassroots people on the ground, of you know, 600 of which have been arrested, are going to be uh, putting forth different messaging. We still both want the pipeline gone. Uh, you know, the tribe is very big on the legal procedures that are in place right now involving the environmental impact statement, uh, which Trump is going to try with all his might to rescind and to turn around. The tribe is very much invested, as are we, and we support everything the tribe does, including defunddapple.org. But, uh, but when it comes to on-the-ground resistance, uh, winning the, in the court of public opinion, the people on the ground are calling for more warriors, more uh, disciplined and capable, mobile, self-sufficient people to come to the, to, back to the fight, to the Standing Rock Nation, because we, we don't just see this as a water, a fight for a people's or a population's right to clean water. This is now a fight. And it's not only a, an Indian fight about our inherent treaty authorities to determine our own destiny and have the tool avail, avail ourselves of the inherent sovereign aspects so we can lift ourselves out of poverty. But this is a fight about the integrity of the United States Constitution, whether or not the Army Corps do, does our government get to say this little green area is now your free speech zone. Because that's what the Army Corps has already tried to do. 
they tried to declare us trespassers on our own land and evict us by December 5th. But we stood strong. And now what we're saying is, look, the government doesn't have the authority to inhibit our constitutional rights in that fashion. They, they can't tell us where we can and can't peaceably assemble or speak freely. In addition, there, there are Fourth Amendment concerns with illegal searches, seizures, and surveillance. When you're out here, it's, it's, it's a low-level conflict zone. There are drones constantly gathering facial recognition and other data. There are helicopters. There are fixed-wing aircraft. There, it, it's just it, it's it's really a, a psychological operation. Are they still there? I mean, I remember this from my time there. But after December fourth, has any of that monitoring gone away? Do they have they given up on that that part? No. Um, every time people in the camps move or if they go near, um, you know, there, there's a de facto area where there's a buffer zone where the DAPL security and the Morton County uh, law enforcement, when, whenever we encroach on those areas, which are not private property, it, it's, they, they claim in the public that they're protecting private property. But that's, that's just a lie. And it's, if you go back into the history of this over the last six months, you'll find uh, Morton County law enforcement telling bold-faced lies to the media, like when they sprayed the water cannons on November 20th. They said, we only sprayed those water cannons to put out fires. That very next day, there was any, anybody who watched the live feed could see an indiscriminate spraying of people and subject, you know, literally intentionally or negligently putting those lives at risk, reckless endangerment of lives. The same felonies that they were charging water protectors with for locking themselves to machines, uh, they were committing those same felonies that night. The, the police were. They also said that explosives weren't used that night at the bridge. I was there at the bridge. I heard explosives. There was something, ex I mean, look at Sophia's arm, something loaded there. And so that's what the outside world, I'll, I'll talk to any outside media, but I, I, I rarely ever, I have not talked to any local media since I came on the scene because local media, which is the, which is the only mainstream media here is colluding with Morton County law enforcement, the national guard, the governor, the legislators. And it's, 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 this is a PR war. 